news now. UK employment has leapt to 4.2% in February, up from 3.9%, and that's according to official figures from the Office for National Statistics. That's considerably higher than expected, and analysts are putting this down to the impact of higher interest rates on employers. And this comes as real wages have risen to their fastest rate since 2021. Well, join us now for more on this good news is our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, with On The Money. Liam, always a delight to have you on the show. Yet, good more, yet more good news for GB PLC. Tell us more. Well, a bit of a mixed bag, really, this data out this morning. On the one hand, as you say, unemployment's up. It's still relatively low by historic standards at 4.2%. But those unemployment figures, they don't capture a lot of people who aren't looking for work and who are out of work. So it is low by international standards and low by historic standards, but it is tipping up a little bit unemployment and the numbers don't really capture everything that's going on. But on the other hand, the wage data is really quite encouraging. But again, I'm an economist, there's always on the one hand, on the other, there's a little bit of a fly in the ointment on that as well. Let's have a look at this wage data which came out this morning. The ONS tells us that average wages across the UK were up 6% during the three months to February, so that's December, January and February, compared to the same periods uh, 12 months before. Real wages, if you take account of inflation, are up 2.1%, and that is actually a big rise. That's the sharpest rise in real wages since July 2021, because what's happening now is that wage growth is going higher than inflation as inflation comes down. So that's the sharpest rise in real wages since 2021. And that makes it harder for, and this is the bad news, the Bank of England to cut interest rates. Why is that? Because they're worried that these increases in real wages, the members of the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England who set interest rates, they're worried that will feed into inflation and set inflation running again. Now, as it happens, Martin, the inflation number for March comes out tomorrow, uh, 7 a.m. I'll be here in the GB News studio, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, to report on it. And that inflation number is likely to come down quite sharply, maybe below 3%, maybe even approaching 2%, the Bank of England's target. And there will be lots of claims, lots of cries, oh, the Bank of England has to cut interest rates now. And the first time that they're going to meet is on May the 9th. But the thing is... Even if headline inflation is coming down, Martin, if real wages are going up sharply, and we haven't even talked about the oil price, which we mm. talked about yesterday, but it's you know still around $90 a barrel, up from $73 a barrel as recently as mid-January. It's a 25% rise. If you have high wages, if you have high oil prices, that's going to make it very difficult for the Bank of England to cut interest rates. And a lot of people now think the first interest rate cut isn't going to come until not so much the end of spring, but more mid-summer. That's partly because of the oil price. It's also because of what's happening in the US. US inflation has just gone back up to 3.5%. And where the US goes, the UK tends to follow. So there is some good news in this data today. It's certainly good news that real wages are going up as the cost of living crisis is squeezed. But it does make it more interesting difficult for the Bank of England to raise, to lower interest rates, giving families with mortgages some kind of relief. But final thing I'd say, a lot of GB News viewers, they quite like higher interest rates, of course, because they get a decent return on their savings, particularly if they're pensioners. Liam, can I quickly ask you, as I have you here, um, the FTSE 100 taking a bit of a battering today because of the situation in the Middle East. Should people be concerned, even those who don't have stocks and shares, because of, of impact their pensions? Could the faraway trouble in the Middle East be impacting our, our pounds and pence and our purses back here in Blighty? Look, we live in an interconnected, globalised World, the UK is a very internationally exposed economy. Our stock market is very internationally exposed. The FTSE 100 is really a, a, an index of international companies as opposed to UK companies. The UK companies are more what we call the FTSE 250, which includes quite a few less big companies. They're not small, they're just less big. So, yeah, I think it is 
right that we keep an eye on these things. I, I would say, though, repeating what I said to you yesterday, Martin, you know, we've just had the first direct attack by Iran on Israel in you know, living memory, and yet there is a sense in the markets that there probably isn't going to be an escalation of that. We should be really thankful for that. And that's why, frankly, oil is at the moment nearer $90 a barrel than $100 a barrel. So, yes, of course, this international turmoil will impact stocks and shares in the UK. And, yes, of course, that could have knock-on effects. So, of course, you only lose money on shares when you actually sell them. Things do go up and down. So I would say a mixed bag again. Good wage data, uh, not so good unemployment data. Difficulty for the Bank of England, though, to lower interest rates, particularly because of the oil price and also this geopolitical tension in the Middle East and beyond. Superb, Lim Halligan, as ever. A pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, mate.